Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between. Today's video, though, is one of my favorite types of videos of all time, and that is a book haul! And we are going to be hauling mostly newish books. Some aren't that new, but anyway, it's a mix. I also have a package from my good friend Ashley that I'm gonna open up that I should have opened up like a week ago. But I'm gonna open up here because I wanted to unbox it on camera so she could see my reaction. So we're gonna do that and I've got a random Amazon package to open with a non-horror book. So this will be a mix of like middle grade, horror, and non-horror. So we'll just get into it. After the short intro, I will show you the flippin' books. Welcome back, guys. Oh, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready <laughs> for some book goodness. I should have worn, I have these earrings. Where are they? They say books and it's got like a heart and the, the word books is in the heart or written in the heart. Where the heck are they? I have a lot of my earrings like on display as if they are like decorations or something right now. Like they're on the earring backs. I have no idea where I put them. I will find them and I will wear them for my next bookish video. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you are new here, thank you so much for subscribing and joining in on all the fun. I just want to remind you guys, yeah, I talk books, but I also talk about nostalgia sometimes and I also talk about movies sometimes. So yeah, technically I'm a booktube channel, but I'm also a horror tube channel and there's no such thing as nostalgia tube, but whatever. I guess I, I'm kind of a nostalgia tube channel. I'm making it a thing. Whatevs, bitch. <laughs> That's my word, I guess. It could be a thing for all I know, but I, I don't think it is. Anyway, I guess I'll save opening the packages for last. Let's look at some of the stuff I've bought and gotten in the mail the last couple of weeks that I just want to show you guys. Again, this is a mix of horror, of course, adult and, and middle grade horror, and also a mix of non-horror stuff. Starting off with a non-horror book. This is vintage, though. I got this off of Pango Books. And I actually found the other two on thrift books. So this is a Dawson's Creek suspense book. I had no idea these books existed until my friend Eric over at Smells Like Teen Horror, check out his channel, he posted an Instagram post and said, oh, I know you're a fan of Dawson's Creek, Kelsey, but have you heard of these books? And I was like, um no i must have them like now so i went on the hunt the other two i have have the picture on the front it's joey the character joey played by katie holmes those were reasonable i kept seeing this one the one with pacey on the cover played by joshua jackson i kept seeing this going for like 60 bucks however i talked about this book and how it was hard to find on one of my previous videos and my good friend benjamin he is amazing i just adore him i will link his instagram below you should follow him he's really awesome he's just an awesome person all around. Anyway, he messaged me and said, Kelsey, it's on Pango Books for like two dollars. So I ordered it. It's two bucks. You can't do better than that. It's not in the greatest shape. There's a tear here. I don't care. I want to read this. And also, the book is called Bayou Blues. I am from Louisiana. I'm not gonna say I'm from the I'm from the Bayou. That would make me sound like ridiculous, like a normal Louisiana person, which I am not a normal Louisiana person. Uh, I am not from the Bayou. I am from New Orleans, like around New Orleans. So <laughs> I'm not exactly from the Bayou. I don't even think I've actually visited a Bayou. But hey, it is in my state, so I was like kind of interested, like what the hell is going on in this story. Anyway, our first little non-horror book of this haul. And I am going to read this. So next year, one of my goals is to read a whole bunch of non-horror books. And that's a spoiler for my, like, I don't know, my goals for next year, for my reading goals. But that video is not going to be made for months and months and months. So I'll talk about it more in depth then. But along those same lines, I do want to read more Star Trek The Next Generation books. And I've heard, I have this Star Trek book, it's a collection of books called Destiny. And someone commented to me when I posted a picture of this book, Destiny, it's a Star Trek The Next Generation book, once again. I posted it and they said, well, you know, you might be a little confused when you read Destiny because you really should read some other books 
like in the Star Trek TNG universe before getting there. And he gave me like a little list. The list, the website that has the list is actually like kind of long. You have to read all these books. But he specifically was like, you should just concentrate on these books, I think, in my opinion. So one of the books is Resistance. And this has something to do with the Borg, and I love, like, any kind of Borg storyline. If you guys don't know, the Borg, it's, like, this group, this collective, that's one of the main antagonists in Star Trek The Next Generation, and kind of, you know, they mess with Picard's head. They really get in his head. There's a whole big storyline behind it, but I don't want to get into it if you've never watched Star Trek The Next Generation. If you haven't, you really should, because it's wonderful, it's marvelous. Yeah, it's a little cheesy. I mean, it's a little outdated in a way. But I think, like, the the things you learn and can glean from the show, I think, are universal and they never go out of fashion. Like, you can still learn things that are applicable today. I don't know. I just love Jean-Luc Picard, the, you know, the character. He is my favorite captain. I've never really gotten into other Star Trek. I know that, you know, other people who might be Trekkies watching is like, blasphemy! I'm sorry, I just like TNG. That's just always in my jam. I'm like really into TNG. So I'm gonna start digging into some TNG books next year. And Resistance would be a good one to start with when I'm trying to get towards reading Destiny and like that whole backstory, which hopefully will make me less confused. <laughs> All right, so here is a book that I've heard is a little disturbing. Now, I don't exactly know why. I've heard great things about this from a few people, including Amy Noel Reads and also Mr. Morningstar. This is The Thing Between Us, a novel by Gus Moreno. And I definitely am excited to get into this. The premise, I think, has to do with this like almost haunted Alexa type of device if I'm if I'm remembering the plot right. Ever since Vera and Diego bought the ITSA, life has gotten strange. The ads for the world's most advanced smart speaker didn't mention scratching in the walls, eerie music in the dead of night, or peculiar packages. Who ordered industrial strength lie? It's weird but amusing, right up until Vera is killed and Diego's world becomes unbearable. That's just a little snippet of the back of the book. But yeah, already it sounds fantastic. I'm guessing that the ITSA like I said, is kind of like an Alexa type of deal, it seems like, at least from the description. Anyway, I cannot wait to read it. And the cover is pretty trippy in a neat way. The next two books I'm going to talk about have to do with a certain theme, and I'm actually hoping sometime in the future to do a whole reading vlog surrounding this theme. And I actually want to buy a third book that would you know, go into this reading vlog and would match perfectly with these books. And the book is a nonfiction book about the Mothman. So I would buy that book, basically like the real life story of like the Mothman prophecies, but the nonfiction book. And these would go perfectly along with that. And that would be my reading vlog. So like a Mothman themed reading vlog. So here we have Below by Laurel Hightower. I've heard amazing things about this little novella. It's not even like a full-length book. Look how tiny it is. It is, just to see, it is um, 106 pages. So short. The font isn't that small. So yeah, I could definitely get to this in a reading vlog and other things at the same time. So this book I've heard or novella, I've heard marvelous things about specifically from my friend Amber over at Secondhand Reader. Check out her channel. I will link all the channels I mentioned and all the people I mentioned in the description below. Please check them out. I think it's important. I'm not just touting these people to tout them. I watch these channels. I get recommendations. You will get recommendations as well if you check out their channels. And so, yes, let's support other people and great content creators and great people in general. So below, Amber really liked it and I, she said I should pick it up. And even before I think she said I should pick it up, like I saw her mention it before she even finished reading it. And I was like, I kind of want to get it. I've been seeing it around, but her mention of it kind of gave me the little push I needed to order it. Then I saw this a long time ago. I am sure, I am just guessing, but it's a pretty good guess. Then I saw this off of Cameron Chaney's channel. And of course, I'm talking about the channel Library Macabre, which to me is like the quintessential place to go to find out stuff about middle grade horror and YA horror, both new middle grade and YA horror and vintage YA horror and middle grade horror. So he's just so knowledgeable about that stuff. And 
I'm sure I saw him show this on his channel at one point. This is Mothman's Curse by Christy or Christine Hayes, my, my apologies. Pictures by James K. Hindles. So this is a middle grade book. Um, it just seems really cute and I don't even need to know really what it's about. <laughs> Obviously this is just like a whole Mothman type of theme and that is what I'm going for. So yeah, I'm so happy to own these. Next up, a newer middle grade series that just looks so cute. And yes, I have heard about this from Cameron Janey's channel. Once again, not to keep touting him, but I have heard about it from him. So that is who I discovered it from. And that is why you should check out his channel. So many great wrecks all the time. You find out about things you would never know about from his channel. And even though he's not uploading a lot right now, and he hasn't uploaded in a while in general, he is uploading a ton on his Patreon, which I will link below. Because guess what, guys? I actually wanted to do a haul today because I went to a library book sale, just a quick sidebar. And at the library book sale, I was hoping I would find some vintage horror books that I could show you guys in this haul, in addition to these newer books. However, unfortunately, I found nothing for myself. And this is the second library book sale I've gone to in my home state of Louisiana that I have found diddly squat in terms of vintage horror, which is kind of a bummer. But it's okay, because guess what? I go to the young adult section and I see Hardy Boys, like case file books, I can't remember the exact name, because I'm not like very familiar with Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, but Cameron is a big fan of, of Hardy Boys books and Nancy Drew books. And actually, I think I, I found two Bobsy twin books that I got for Cameron as well. So I got him a whole stack of books that he was missing, because I had messaged him like, do you need any of these? And he said, yeah, can you pick up this, this, and this? The quality isn't great, which I told them, but they could be placeholders for him for now. And if you want to see which particular books I got him, he will, I'm just guessing, and it's a pretty good guess because he does this all the time. Whenever he receives them, he will unbox them for his Patreon channel. So if you become a patron of him, you'll be able to see the books I found for him. So I did not find anything for me, but at least I found something for my great friend Cameron. He's just a wonderful human being. But I'm gonna get back to what I'm talking about. So sidebar over, go on, goodbye. Now we are back to the new middle grade horror series I picked up, which is totally formatted like goosebumps. So, you know, the front might not scream goosebumps to you, but I think the artwork is very goosebumps-like. But what's even more goosebumps-ish is the back. It is formatted totally like an old school goosebumps book. This is exactly how the back of a goosebumps would look like. So I just think that was so really unique and such a nice nod to goosebumps and homage to goosebumps that this author and, you know, what he envisioned, I guess, for the book design, how what he did. It was great. R.H. Grimley is the author, and the series is Frightland. So I have four books here, and I may return, not return, but exchange one, because the fourth one, there's like, you probably can't see it very well. There's like a something here. I don't know what this is, but it's bothering me. And I want these to be nice shapes. So the first one, where was it? I just was holding it up. It's called The Wild Man of Shaggy Creek, just to hold it up one more time. Look at the wonderful colors. Very reminiscent with the colors, too, of Goosebumps. Second one is Why I Don't Sleep on Feather Beds. And we've got this monster kind of shooting out from the feather bed. And yeah, that, that's very frightening. Just these look so cute. I'm very excited about these. This one is a great, great cover. This might be my favorite of the covers of the four of, the four of them I have. The Bones at the Bottom of the Lake. It feels like you could read this in summer. Look at this amazing skeleton dragging himself out of this lake onto this pier or dock, whatever. Oh, I love it. I very much love it. And finally, I had to get a horror book about donuts. So this is the donut shop of doom. Out of the pan and into the fryer, says the tagline. Wonderful. And look, we've got like a donut shop with the creepy like sign. And we've got like this squid-like creature coming out of the shop. So yes, this is the one that I would love to exchange because, I don't know, it just doesn't look perfect. There's like a crease here. It's either a sticker or it's part of the book coming off and that's how it arrived. Amazon, you're such an ass. Amazon's been delivering stuff damaged a lot lately and it's been very annoying and I've been hating them for it. I want to shout out another wonderful human being. The next two books I got because I saw these talked about on my friend Katrina Brown's channel. Her channel is called Katrina Brown, so check out her channel. I will link it below. She is marvelous. She's like a new favorite booktuber of mine. She's just so sweet. I, I really like her a lot. And again, that's like the theme of a lot of my videos is promoting other people 
because I learn a lot from these people. So why not tell you about them if you haven't already heard about them? So she told me about this new David Sodegren book, which I had not even heard about. For some reason, it was not on my radar. It's called Satan's Burnouts Must Die. And she read it and she said, it's nuts. Look at the cover. This dude does look kind of demonic or he's like into demonic worship or something. Whatever. I'm here for it. Out of the desert they rode, 400 pounds of hot steel throbbing between their legs. Satan's burnouts, 12 sex crazed sadists with murder on their minds. And there's more to the description, but that's just a little taste. And yeah, sign me up because it sounds wild and kind of like extreme, but in a fun way. All right, next up, The Doctor's Demons, which is a newer book, but it screams like old school horror to me like it just looks like an old school horror book so the design of the cover is just fantastic because it just got that very nostalgic vibe and feel and it's got a great cover which not all newer horror books do so well i mean horror books are pretty great now i mean there are some great newer horror books i find that thriller books though i really don't like the covers like for almost any of them i'm like boring 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 if you like them please don't take offense it's just a personal opinion and we could agree to disagree but yeah I'm not too jazzed about thriller covers. I don't even read very many thrillers, but I might read a few next year for, like, my non-horror reading section of the year, which I'm trying to read a few of those things, as I said earlier. But yes, back to this one, The Doctor's Demons by Maria Abrams. The denizens of hell are angry with Hannah. Child psychiatrist Hannah Cohen thought she could handle difficult cases, but medical school never prepared her for Elena, nor the demon that's possessing her. Hannah finds a way to rid Elena of her demon, but not without a price. Years later, Hannah has grown comfortable exercising the demons of her patients until she meets Lucas. Whatever is inside of Lucas is far more powerful than anything she has faced. The denizens of hell are angry with Hannah, and they sent one of their leaders to destroy her. Yes. I love possession stories, and I never get to read them. I have read The Exorcist, of course. I have read um, another book that I'm going to talk about. I have a plan for this book as part of, like, my 2000 subscriber thank you videos. I've got a few thank you videos planned, but one of them, I want to talk about either one, you know, I don't know if it's going to be for 2000 or 3000, but I want to talk about, about my reading journey and the books that got me into reading and, you know, where I am now as a reader and just kind of like my booktube journey as well. So it'll be kind of like a story time type of video, but it'll also be a way for me to highlight some books that I never get to talk about because it's books that I liked and that kind of turned me into a reader and kind of even got me into looking up things about books and that's how I stumbled upon booktube so I'll get to highlight those books that just kind of got me into this whole realm that I'm in now so very excited about that but yes uh a possession book was one of those books that got me into reading but anyway I digress this one sounds marvelous and a lot of fun all right last up in terms of the books that I have already unboxed uh to show you this is a non-fiction book and how I heard about this was I was a part of a collab on Juan's channel. His channel is fantastic, so elegant. I say that all the time about his channel, but it's true. He talks about horror in such an academic, wonderful way. Very smart, intelligent person and very nice person. His channel is called Plagued by Visions. Check him out. He will be linked below. We did a whole collab myself, him, a whole bunch of other booktubers talking about disturbing books and of course one it's his brainchild you know talking about all these disturbing books so he asked a whole bunch of us you know come up with some wrecks that are disturbing books and somebody recommended this book um it's kind of hard to describe it's called a slow death 83 days of radiation sickness so it's all about this case study about radiation sickness so to be more specific here it says, the worst nuclear radiation accident in Japan's history struck a uranium processing facility northeast of Tokyo. Three workers were exposed to extreme levels of neutron beams as a result. Japan's public broadcaster, NHK, documented the step-by-step -step deterioration and intense medical treatment of one of those workers. The resulting original television documentary aired in May 2001 and subsequently won the Gold Nymph Award, the highest award possible at the 42nd Monte Carlo Television Festival in 2002. This book is the print version of that celebrated feature and includes an afterword that updates the narrative. So essentially, like, we're following the very sad kind of 
demise of this worker who was exposed to radiation. And I know this makes me sound so disturbing that I'm into this story, but like radiation and like nuclear stuff is very interesting to me. Like I'm not happy that like this person got sick, but I do want to learn more about how radiation affects the body. And I actually used to be really into medical stuff. Not that I ever wanted to be a doctor, but like ER was very fascinating to me. And so I really got into like just the medical side of the TV show ER back when I was like in early college years. So medical stuff intrigues me, period. But also radiation on top of that, that whole idea of nuclear power and what it can do when an accident happens is just like whoa it blows my mind so i'm kind of intrigued by this but i know it's going to be super sad and powerful but also very disturbing and sickening and and all of that but i do want to learn more about how it affects the body all right the first package i'm going to open is just something i ordered from amazon it is not from a friend it's just something i bought and it's something i've already read if this is what i think it is I was gonna freak out if this wasn't in good shape. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite books of all time. So I talked a little bit about this and why this means so much to me in my birth year book tag video. And of course that original tag was created by Ali over at Criminali. Fantastic channel, love his content. He just pumps out content. He is so creative, so intelligent. He's an author, he's just fantastic. I can't recommend his booktube channel enough, honestly. But he did this whole birth year book tag and one of the questions was about, have you read any books that were released or published from the year you graduated high school, I believe. So 2007, it says first published in 2008, but I'm telling you, I looked this up on Goodreads and it's 2007. Well, anyway, if Goodreads is correct, 2007 is when I picked up this for the first time, but I actually picked it up as a gift. So I never got to have a physical copy of this. I read it and I gave it to my friend, Teresa. She's one of my best friends. And she also loves Chris Farley and David Spade. We actually call each other like their names, like I call her Spade, and she used to call me Farley because I'm kind of spastic and energetic and all over the place. Like that is really who I am. Like this is not an act. I'm just zany out there, I guess. <laughs> I'm just wearing a little coat. <laughs> anyway, like Chris Farley in uh, Tommy Boy, one of my favorite movies. So anyway, this is basically a wonderfully formatted book taking a look at Chris Farley's life. It interviews all kinds of people from his childhood, but also SNL co-workers and movie co-workers. Tons of people Chris Farley interacted with throughout his life, including, like I said, his family members and childhood friends. And so it gets really deep into his life. And like you can see, I'll show you the way it's formatted, with excerpts from interviews. So you see the people's names here? And so you've got like Chris Rock, Alec Baldwin, Kevin Nealon, Norm MacDonald, R.I.P. Norm MacDonald, he's gone too now. Um, so they're all talking about, Lorne Michaels, all talking about Chris Farley. And there's different chapters, so like his time, uh, Whale Boy. There's one called Whale Boy, I remember the story from that chapter. Um, a motivated speaker. This is so fantastic. If you like nonfiction and like biographies and stuff, I highly recommend this. And so the other day, I don't know why I thought about this again, but this just came up in my mind and I was like, I really want to have a physical copy. I think I know what it is. So I was talking on my live stream um, when I was reviewing Off Season by Jack Ketchum. I was talking about how I wanted to read more nonfiction and more non-horror books next year, as I've already said in this video as well. But after I was done streaming, I, I remembered more books I was thinking that I wanted to read and I really want to reread this. I think it'd be fantastic to reread this and revisit it next year and so I was like I gotta get a physical copy. So that was my excuse and I'm so excited and look at this amazing cover. It's one of my favorite book covers of all time with him doing this wonderful flexible ballet type of move and except like you know he's not like like somebody you'd think could just be so agile and stuff and like it talks about that in the book how flexible and how good at physical comedy he was and how he was actually very graceful um despite what people might think it, it just i don't know i just love this book and i'm so excited to read it next year and i hope i like it as much as i did the first time but i have a feeling i will so i'm so happy to finally own a copy all right next up we're going to open the package from my friend ashley and she's got an amazing instagram account she like crochets i don't even know if it's like technically called crocheting she like sews stuff 
and it's not really technically called sewing either I'm pretty sure it's crocheting I cannot do it so like I don't know the specifics of like what it's called like cross hatching and all this crazy stuff like I cannot even believe she does it she blows my mind anyway I will link her Instagram account below because you get to see like these videos of her doing stuff but she also loves books and she collects books so she's got like a dual account in the sense that like it's cool and badass in two two dual ways it would be cool and badass if I could speak at all <laughs> all right so I'm gonna open this and then we'll see what's inside <laughs> so I saw her making this she made this on on Instagram she showed pictures of herself wearing it she made it Nickelodeon colors oh my god that's a hat it's a squid hat <laughs> it's so cool Ashley I love it look at its eyes oh how did she do this she freaking made this guys look at it. it's like squid like head wow this is so cool thank you Ashley what the hell it's so amazing <laughs> I'm gonna have to find like a mannequin head so I can put this in my room like when display like by my Nickelodeon stuff because she knows I love Nickelodeon and guys if you don't know I love Nickelodeon just to reiterate it's like my favorite thing 90s Nickelodeon specifically and by the way green orange one of those colors Nickelodeon colors specifically like old school Nickelodeon colors she also sent some books oh and a card I'm gonna read the card first don't look at the books I'm trying not to look down Kelsey that's me <laughs> Oh, I love you, Ashley. Thank you. She said she was sorry she missed my birthday, and this is like a late birthday present. Hope she, hope I like the books and the hat. I love the hat. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it the rest of the video. <laughs> it's amazing. I can't believe you made this. It feels so sturdy too. Like, how'd you make the eyeballs? She had to like buy eyeballs somewhere. Anyway, all right, let's get to the. <gasps> I haven't even showed you guys. Oh my god. I'm like gonna get parched. I'm not parched. I'm gonna get like teary. I'm already freaking out. This is my favorite movie of like all time. <laughs> I'm getting a little emotional actually. I love this. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Home Alone 2. Lost in New York. It's like a novelization. I've never seen this out in the wild like anywhere. <laughs> I'm actually getting teary eyed. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it so much. It's got pictures from the movie. Oh no, it's falling out. I'm gonna fix it. I don't care. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Oh my god, I'm gonna treasure this forever. Based on the sequel to the blockbuster comedy. So you might be saying Home Alone 2 is your favorite movie of all time. Um, yeah, because Home Alone 1 is great and all, but I actually prefer Home Alone 2. Oh my god, Ashley, you, you know me very well. <laughs> this is like the greatest gift ever. I'm freaking out. You and freaking Benjamin and Cameron are just too nice to me. And she sent an, 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 a vintage, not an, a vintage horror book, Child of Darkness by David B. Silva. Look at this half mean face, half nice face. I don't think I have this one. She was asking if I had these books, and I don't think I have this one. If I do have it, I don't even remember I have it, but I don't think I do. I 100% know I don't have the Home Alone book. And now I'm like sniffling because I was crying. Sorry, I'm so gross. Oh my god, it's so cool. His tormented mind would send an entire town to hell. I'm sure it's gonna look great when I do the voice effect with this squid hat on. It's gonna look awesome. Oh my god, in a Nickelodeon book, I have none of these. This is an Alex Mack book. If you guys know, like, the old school 90s show, The Secret World of Alex Mack, here is a novelization. They do have, like, YA kids books. So I've only seen one in the wild, and it was, like, a Halloween Alex Mack book, and the store was super expensive, so I put it back. I wish I would have gotten it looking back now. However, I didn't. So, but even if I had gotten it, I wouldn't, it was not the same as this one, so I would have not had this one anyway. But oh my god, thank you so much, Ashley. This is so cool. So let me see what year this is from. This was published in 1996, and the the story that this one is is Mistaken Identity, and they're not numbered, are they? So I know that, like I said, since I saw that other one in the wild, I know there's more than one Alex Mack book, but where this one falls in the book series, I, I don't know. By the way, I don't know if Ashley knew that this was in there. So there is a Titanic bookmark in here at the back of the book. Cool, Ashley, did you know this was in there? 
One of the first lifeboats to leave the sinking ship carried only 28 people. It could have held 64. One of the Titanic's coal bunkers was on fire when the ship left Southampton. The radio operator of the Californian, the only ship nearby that could have saved the rest of the Titanic's passengers and crew, was not on duty to receive the Titanic's distress signals. Wow. What circumstances? Maybe it wouldn't have been such a disaster if some of those circumstances wouldn't have happened. Obviously. <laughs> That's kind of... I guess a statement that doesn't need to be made. It's an obvious statement, but isn't that cool? That was in the back of this book. I love it so much. I can't even believe the Home Alone thing. It's like one of my favorite books ever now. I love it so much. I can't believe I was tearing up over Home Alone. By the way, I was watching wrestling last night with my boyfriend Paul. We were watching. It's a, a company called All Elite Wrestling. Uh, the abbreviation is AEW. And Macaulay Culkin, of course, who plays Kevin from Home Alone, he was in the crowd, and I was like, Macaulay, because yeah! I love Macaulay Culkin. Like, so I don't just like Home Alone. I like Macaulay Culkin. Period. I'm gonna treasure this forever. Oh my god! Thank you so much. And let's see what year this was published. This was published in, where are you? 1992. Oh gosh, so, so early. And that it, yes, yes, 1992. I was trying to make sure that that wasn't the movie copyright, which I don't think it is. But anyway, 1992 for this publishing of this book. Yikes, I did it again. Anyway. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Ashley. Oh my god, so cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this long-winded haul. I hope you enjoyed. I know it's not a ton of vintage horror, which you guys like to see, but I still think there was a good mix of vintage, new, horror, non-horror, also Nickelodeon squids, <laughs> so, and Home Alone novelizations. I mean, I think it's amazing. It's so much better that it's Home Alone 2. It makes it even better. Anyway, thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Benjamin, once again, for telling me about flipping the Dawson's Creek book two bucks two bucks don't be confused it's not four two bucks one pango books a steal can't wait to read those books and thank you to all the booktubers that gave me some of these purchasing ideas i really appreciate it i love finding book ideas and if you had to criticize booktube i guess it's that they make you want to buy more books like all these great accounts make you want to buy 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 but i'm okay with that to me that's a positive not a negative but to my boyfriend paul it is probably a negative it is fine. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, for this time, that is it for me. Till next time, you know what you can do? Keep on killing it. Or squidding it. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Bye, guys. <laughs>